Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp channel. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate that how you can stop writing useless tests. Now, stop writing useless tests, not all the tests. So not all the tests are useless. So keep that in mind. All right. So I'm going to give you an example of a useless test. Maybe you have written it. Maybe, you know, you have seen people writing it. Um, I have seen this a lot in the different projects that I've worked on. Uh, we have like 2,000, 3,000 tests, and then a lot of tests are just useless. They're not really testing anything. All right, and this will be one of those tests. So you can see I have a budget app over here. Uh, there's no code, nothing. It's just a plain budget app with nothing really going on. And I have this unit testing project also. So what I want to test is that I can create a budget. So test budget create. I li like to write a unit test that can test that the budget category or the budget can be created. And the budget will be saved in the Swift data, using Swift data to SQLite. But since we're running a test, we can actually save it in the memory. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and import Swift data first, Swift data. And if I'm doing kind of like a test-driven development, I don't really have any budget class written or budget model, I can just start from over here, all right? Now, if you do want to create the budget model, you should probably go back. And in the budget app, we can just go ahead and create that model. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create a model. There we go. We know that we need the model anyways. It's not like the test is telling us that you need the model. It's, it's common sense. I mean, you need a model, right? To to get it to work. So I'll do go ahead and import Swift data. And this is a model that we're gonna create because this is going to be saved. Eventually it will be saved in SQLite database using Swift data. So I'm gonna decorate this with a model macro. And now I can go ahead and add different kind of properties over here and I'll initialize it. There we go. So this is our budget model that we've just created. It has a name, it has a limit. Limit means that for this budget, let's say entertainment, I can only spend $200 a month. Now, if you go back to the test and try to refer to the budget model that we just created, it's not gonna work because these are in completely separate targets. The unit test is in the budget app test target and the other one is in the budget app, all right? So how can I import, how can I access things that are in the real target, in my app target, from my, or from my unit test? I can go ahead and say testable import, and then I can import the main target or the app target. So now you can see that it's a little bit of a different color, so I can now access it, so that's good. But in order to for us to work with Swift data, we need to create a container. So let me go ahead and create a container. You can see that when I'm con creating the container, I'm saying over here is stored in memory to be true. Um, you can, if you want, you can make it false also. This means that it will be written to the actual database. There's nothing wrong with that. You can definitely do that. You just have to make sure that when this test is done running, then you will also, in the setup or in the teardown, you remove the data that you're inserting into the database. So instead of that, I'm just saying over here in memory true, so that the data will be in the memory, and when the next test runs, well, it will be wiped out, so it will be clean. Next, I'm gonna go and get access to the context from the container. We're gonna go ahead and access the main context now, you see that over here, main context is a little bit grayed out. So main context is available in the on the main actor. So we have to explicitly say that this particular test is going to be running on the main actor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, main actor or decorate this with the main actor. The next thing we want to do is to create a budget. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a budget. Now we can access the budget class. I'm gonna go ahead and say groceries. And 
put some sort of a limit. We can also go ahead and save the budget. There we go. We can also retrieve the budget. I mean, if it's saving the budget, how do we make sure that it is saved? Well, we need to retrieve the budget. So I'll create a fetch descriptor. Fetch descriptor equals to fetch descriptor. And we can uh, pass a predicate. Let's go ahead and pass the predicate where the name of the budget, because name is one of the properties, is groceries. Sort, well, we don't really want to sort anything, so we're just going to remove that part. And let's go ahead and see, I think it's telling us that it needs to infer the type, so I'm just going to pass in the budget. And you know what, I also pass over here also, so that it's a little bit more clear the fetch descriptor is going to be for the budget. Okay. Now this is going to return us some budgets, so I can use context.fetch, I can pass in the fetch descriptor, and this is going to return us an array of budgets. So I'll say budget. And I can use try, that's fine. And from here, I'm just gonna get the first one, hopefully there's only one, but you can check like if there's only one, but I'm just gonna grab the first one. And now I can check if the title or the name of that particular budget is groceries. And I can also check that the limit is whatever the limit that we have indicated, which is 500. And let's go ahead and uh, run this test. Now, if we run this test, actually it says text succeeded. So this means that it's passing. You can see over here, it's passing. Well, this is great that the test is passing, but what are we testing actually? I mean, think about it for a second. Don't give the answer right away. What, what exactly did you test? Was there any logic that you were testing or did you just wrote the test just for the sake of writing the test? What did you test? Well, we created the budget. We saved the budget. We, we tested that the save is working correctly. We tested that the save is working correctly. We tested that the surf data is working correctly. Okay, how about this? How about this test? Test foo, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's say name, John, and customers. Tell me if you like this kind of a test. Customers.append, probably have to make it var. There we go. All right, so we have a name, which is uh, John. We have customers array, which is string. And then we add name to customers array. And then we can say XCT assert. Um, I mean, we can do it multiple ways, I guess. We can say customers dot, you know, count equals to one. Do you think, what do you think we're testing over here? If I'm running this test, test foo. Well, we're testing that the Swift array is working correctly. That's what we're testing, right? So this is really a bad test. I mean, we're trying to test Swift language. You shouldn't be testing Swift language. That's not your job. Your job is to test the domain logic or the actual business rules of your application. And the same thing, but in a much bigger capacity is over, going over here. We're not really testing anything. There is no domain logic. There is no, there are no business rules. You're literally trying to create an object which is of type budget and then you insert it and then you fetch it just to make sure that it's inserted. Well, yeah, that's the job of Swift data to make, to, to save it and to retrieve it. So basically we're testing Swift data. All right, so this, these kind of tests can are always uh, going to be useless test because it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really produce anything for us. It doesn't really check anything. We are simply testing Swift data framework itself and not really any of the custom logic. Well, we don't really have a custom logic at this point, right? I mean, all we're doing is creating a budget and inserting it into the database. There's nothing really happens in between when you're inserting in the database. It's not like, well, you cannot have the same title. 
like groceries. If I try to add another groceries or another budget with the same name, it shouldn't allow me to do that. It should throw an exception. Well, that is the business logic that you should definitely test, but not this. This is not really business logic. This is nothing. You're just inserting something into the database and you're just testing that the surf data layer, the framework works correctly. So stop writing these kind of tests. And maybe you have already seen these kind of tests in your code. I have seen these kind of tests everywhere that I worked. I mean, and in hundreds and sometimes thousands and thousands of tests I've seen. I mean, sometimes I've seen tests that are testing the mock. I mean, in the end, nothing gets tested because everything is just mocks and mocks and mocks. So, so don't do that, all right? So now you might be wondering, okay, what will be a good test to write? Right? I mean, this is, if this is a bad test, then what will be a good test to write? And that is something we're going to discuss in the next video. So make sure that you are stay tuned for that. All right. So hopefully you have enjoyed it. Thank you. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my brand new course on Teachable. It's called Swift UI Architecture Patterns and Best Practices. Now, this course is $149, but it expires. You can see there is a launch code, launch day, which is your coupon code, and you can use that coupon code to get 40% off, but it expires literally today, 5-9. It has been around, but it, it's expiring today, so make sure you get the course. Now, uh, if we scroll, you can see the promo video of the course. That's perfectly fine, but if you go through the course, you'll find out that this is like three years of my research plus more and what I found out about the Swift UI and architecture and what works and what doesn't work. So if you're ever wondering that what kind of architecture to use, what are the benefits and the, the, you know, the pros and the cons of different architectures, well, this is the course for you. You can see that I have separate sections for Swift UI views, validation, navigation, testing, a huge section on testing and many other sections. So if you're interested, uh, check out the link in the YouTube description and I'm sure you're going to love this course. Thank you so much.